Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Cyber Sanctuary uh -huh. here at TGPOA. That's the gathering place of Aurora and or all, all nations. nations. I'm Jessica Williams. Happy to be one of your hosts today. And I'm Helena Kamiko. Also happy to be one of your hosts today. We hope you had a really amazing week and we are going to kick off the new week. As many of you may know, Sundays is the beginning of the week. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. On the seventh day, God rested, but it's the day of rest. We start everything with rest. Yes. And we head into the rest. That's, that's right. <laughs> oh, you're clever. Uh, you know, it's a Sunday morning and we're here at church. Yep. That's why. Best place to be. I've got a spring in my step. I'm happy to be here. I gotta I, bounce. I, you gotta bounce. I won't spring because then I'll go off camera and, you know, we don't need that. No. No. But we hope that you're having a great Saturday, Sunday, not Saturday, <laughs> a great weekend and a great week. We wish you a great week coming up. We have a lot of things happening on deck, some really exciting announcements mm -hmm. uh, today. Who do we have speaking, Elena? This morning? Yeah. Pastor Victoria. Okay. She always brings the fire, the glory, woo, the passion, the power. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's going to be always a Holy Ghost blowout. Wonderful. And and next Sunday, I think that is, is Mario Nudo, who will be bringing the word. Uh, and then who do we have tomorrow? Tomorrow, our Monday huh? night Sea Glow oh, yes. revival outpouring. I think this is the first time she's speaking here, Sandra Benalia. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we um, have been introduced to Sandra Benalia for the first time at Eagle Worldwide at summer camp last yes, year. Yes, it was amazing. And she is a powerful mm -hmm. woman of God. She's a marketplace minister, a pastor. She has a powerful prophetic gift, an yep. amazing and anointed call yes. on her life. I mean, Holy Spirit is in us, so we are yeah. really all anointed, and and we walk in that anointing. But yep. God has really given her a powerful authority to to declare her testimony and declare the now word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. She has a really, really powerful testimony. Testimony for sure. And she was just on Sid Roth recently. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. And that's a powerful thing. Um, so we are very blessed to be able to have her. And it's wonderful that she's, you know, connected in the Eagle Worldwide family. Yeah. So if you have not heard this powerhouse Wonder Woman of God, you definitely don't want to miss out for sure tomorrow night. Now, Pastor Victoria is certainly a powerhouse Wonder Woman of God, too. Yes. So you, it's good you're here today, too. It's all good. It's <laughs> but, all good. But, but Sandra, pa Sandra, Pastor Sandra Benalia, she's new to us mm -hmm. and, new, and new to our online audience yeah. and new to the Cyber Sanctuary. So we want to make sure that we give her a warm welcome and, and show up to see what God is going to bring to us through our powerful sister. Uh -huh. And then Friday, April 17th, which is coming up this coming Friday, we have our prayer night. Mm -hmm. So we want to welcome you. If you haven't checked us out before in person, we'd love to see you for a service. But if you are more, you know, wanting just to join us for the prayer uh, this Friday, at, I believe it starts at 8 p.m. Yep, 8 till 10. Yeah, 8 yep. till 10. And um, usually it's just a, a very quaint, quiet atmosphere. You're not obligated to pray out loud, but it's a place where our hearts are in unity and alignment. We pray, we, we contend, we lift up the things that God is bringing to our hearts. Some people pray, some people don't, but it's that spirit of prayer and being in that place of unity together. So I want to invite you out to that. Mm. And then tell us a little bit about what's coming up of the month, Helena. Ah, what do you know about the, the end of the month? Well, I can't remember the name of it, but because we always give these conferences a name, but it's a prophetic conference. Let's see, yes. Screaming Eagles Prophetic yes. Mentoring Conference. It's going to be powerful. Wow. Uh, a really power-packed lineup with Dr. Russ and Dan Daniel Soto and Ashley Almas. Yes. Yes, a very powerful prophetic team. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, Pastor Daniel walks in an amazing gift. Uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, yeah. signs, wonders, miracles in the glory. Ashley Almas walks next to Dr. Russ, really walks in that prophetic mantle. Powerful, powerful anointing. And I, I believe it's going to be a really, really wonderful conference. Yep. If you have never been to a, a prophetic conference or if you've been to every prophetic mm -hmm. conference mm -hmm. yeah. and every school of the prophets and been in every mentoring session that Dr. Russ has ever done, mm -hmm. you're still not going to want to miss this. That's right. There is a new glory and, and, and open heaven that's upon us. So true. Yeah. And 
there is always fresh manna from heaven, but there is an increasing glory and an increasing dimension of revelation. The revelatory realm is breaking open mm -hmm. more than it ever has in any other time in history. And God is pouring out. Now, these are people who've been walking in the prophetic for a very yeah. long time and are demonstrating what is available. And I know each one of these people and they are constantly pressing in for the more. Mm -hmm. And so they are never satisfied with what God is has available now. That's it's true. no, no. God always has more available. And they're not just pressing into it for themselves, but to say, hey, also this is available. And if you're not hearing God in this way, and if you're not seeing God in this way, you can because it's available to you too. That's true. You can never exhaust what God has for you. There's always more. And if they're uh, pursuing more, we should be pursuing more too. And if it's your first time, come and get activated. Learn about yes. it and actually start getting activated in that in that gift. Yes, it's a powerful impartation. Yep. And I hear we have some good morning, so I'll, I'm going to say oh, hi fantastic. to you in just a second, but I want to make that point out. Oh, hi, Arthur. Good morning. Hey, Arthur. You have heard correct. <laughs> it is absolutely going to be a great day today, and it's extra great because you are here. And Sheila, good morning. <laughs> so good to see you again. Alex, good morning. Good morning, Alex. We love you and your family. Yes. Wish you were here. Maybe mm -hmm. you're maybe you're still on your way, but we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you always for your help. Simone, good morning. Yes. Simone, what a wonderful family we have. <laughs> yes. Yes. And Monica. Oh, oh where are oh, you? Oh, you just came in to Florida. Florida. Amazing. Whoa, it's good to see you from the other side. That's awesome. <laughs> I know all these faces except Arthur, do I know you, Arthur? Do yes, know reveal yourself, yes. Arthur. Have we seen you before? Do we know you before? Have you been here before? Come on down, say hi. Yes, Johnny, welcome. Welcome. And Lisan, it's Lisa, so oh my good gosh. to have you back in the building. This is great. Your face is glorious <laughs> and shining and radiant. Yep. And it's just wonderful to see you on the platform again. We really oh, missed you around here, but really so good. glad that you weigh in online. And we're happy to have you. And yes. It's going to be a continuously great year. There is a grace, grace. on this moment in time. There really is. And I don't know if you could feel it. I pray, you know, as I was saying with the prophetic mentoring, there's impartation. Mm -hmm. Impartation in when people release the power of God in declaration over you. It's the doctrine of laying on of hands. It's straight out of the Bible. Paul talks about it. He's like, I long to be with you to impart a spiritual gift. It's one of the ways that God gave us mm -hmm. to actually transmit or impart or partake in something that seems to be intangible. It's yeah. just like, if I wanted to give you a gift, Helena, mm -hmm. I could buy you something and hand it to you or yes. make you something and physically give it mm -hmm. to you. But how do you exchange a supernatural thing? And it's by way of impartation. Mm -hmm. And the Bible speaks a lot about how that happens. It can happen just through a declaration, yep. through a through a statement. Mm -hmm. It can happen through the laying on of hands, yep. you know, through prayer. Um, and but when you are activated and when you are in that atmosphere and environment where that gift is present, you have the opportunity to catch it. And a lot of, of the things of God are caught as much as they are taught. And so when you put yourself into the environment where you're going to receive the things of God, uh, you, you grab that. And in this moment right now, I want to encourage you that what I'm speaking and what Helena and I are testifying about is the grace in this moment. Yep. That is something that you can catch too. Yes. There is an anointing in this hour. There is open heavens. There is a grace from heaven to execute on the dreams, the plans, and the desires and the unctions, an unction is a, is a compelling, like I feel compelled, I feel inspired to do this, to change, to, to see things differently, to walk out a purpose or walk out a plan or make a plan mm -hmm. and then see it through. There's a grace to complete it where maybe you've struggled with something before and it never had success. Mm -hmm. There is a grace it's true. to begin to do something different and to actually effectively walk in change in these moments of time. That's right. So be inspired, be encouraged, don't give up, persevere because 
because of that grace especially because as much as God wants to give you things there is a scoundrel who wants to take it away so press in hold tight move forward and like I said don't be discouraged be encouraged be inspired and stay enthusiastic because yes. the grace is um, is helping you through yes well, we are just about out of time, but I Aww. love how you said it, you know, stay encouraged because truly the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh -huh. And that joy is something that literally can crush the enemy. Yep. So I speak joy over you right now as we go to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let us celebrate his love today. Joy, joy, joy. And we'll see you after the service. Okay. We'll pray for you. Get your prayer requests ready. God bless. going to speak this morning we have a a video later this morning we're going to watch and dr russ wants to bring a special message and my brother's here so it's all's good all right so dave's here so what let's stand and let's uh um let's just worship the king of kings and the lord of lords father we are just so grateful for today Father, our hearts are heavy because of what's going on in Israel. And we ask that uh, the peace, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. We ask, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that none of the 300 rockets really, uh, or almost none, got through. We pray for this little girl that was injured and possibly a few others. But, Father, uh, out of 300 rockets, very, very little damage or lives were lost. And we thank you for the uh, IDF, the U.S., the U.K., and Jordan for knocking down these, uh, these rockets that were sent to attack Israel. Father, we ask, O oh God, for wisdom, incredible wisdom for President Netanyahu, uh, for the U.S., uh, and other G7 countries, Lord, as they come together to meet and talk about this issue. We're asking this morning that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is still in control, that he rules supreme. No matter whatever country wants to come against his people, 
God still rules. God still reigns. He's coming back soon. We are going to have a glorious morning here this morning. And we welcome the presence of God in here, in this time, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Well, bless the Lord. Another great opportunity to give our God glory, to, to really love on him, to press in. Um, isn't it wonderful that we are so privileged by God, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, as that old hymn says. Thank you, Lord. How good you are. My, the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but you brought me his love for me. His love for me. The sun said.
Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for, for you. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. Hallelujah. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And if he has gone, he promises, I'm gonna come back and receive you to myself. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Oh, how good you are.
thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can never come to an end of knowing you, Lord. Or of loving you.
We give you your glory, Lord. We give you your glory. You are worthy, worthy, worthy.
Stand in awe. stand in awe we get the word awesome from awe and the word awesome really should only be used for God now I use it for other things but really the only one that can give us that awe that reverence that wonder is Jesus. He really is. Praise God. I greet two people and then have a seat. Glory to God. All right. Okay. Take your seats, please. It's good to see uh, Dennis here today and his wife up here. All right. Have a seat. Praise God. Dennis gave a little bit of a scare for all of us this week, but uh, he's on the mend. Glory to God. It's good to have my brother here, Dave, this morning. I told George that he didn't drive the farthest this morning. My brother left at 6 this morning to be here. Isn't that something? From up in north of Sudbury. And uh, we're having a family gathering, birthday party tonight uh, in Mississauga, and that's what he came down for. Praise God. So, uh, let's receive an offering here today. Um, and... 
our tithes and our offerings. We have different ways to give. We have a debit machine back here. If you want to give by credit card, the information's on your envelope. Uh, if you want to give by uh, directly, you can give by e-transfer at give at tgpoa.com, and you can still give by cash. Come on now. All right, let's use that. Glory to God. The Lord bless you as you give. Uh, today, Pastor Victoria is going to be preaching. All right. There's a little excitement there. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to watch uh, a video uh, with some exciting news from Dr. Russ. Uh, tomorrow night, we have uh, Pastor uh, Sandra Bengalia. Pastor Sandra, all right, she was recently on Sid Roth on TV uh, about two or three months ago, and her story is dynamic. You do not want to miss this powerful woman of God. She will be with us in her summer camp, so do come on out, bring your friends and your enemies, glory to God. Uh, after Sandra... On the 22nd and the 29th, we have, uh, uh, I was going to say pastor, but he's more a prophet, evangelist, Daniel Soto, this young man. And uh, on the 29th uh, weekend, we also have a Screaming Eagles Prophetic Mentoring Conference. This is what Eagle Worldwide is known for, the prophetic. What is the prophetic? That is hearing the voice of God. You know, let me just, uh, this morning I, I, I like Ray Comfort. Anybody watch Ray Comfort's videos on YouTube? Are you a good person test? And, and he had a young uh, teenager, maybe college age student, and in one minute, he was able to prove scientifically that God exists in one minute. Isn't that, I put it on my Facebook if you want to watch it or share it. And uh, it's the same reason that I became a believer in God, the exact same reason. Now, when I became a believer in God, uh, it took me another year to figure out which God but I, I, I left the whole area of a creation, I mean, of, of evolution beside. I knew, there was a, I knew that this was not chance. And the argument is simply this. We're standing in a building. There were plans. There was finances. There were choices. There were decisions. Carpet, wall, paint, uh, sound, uh, electrical, uh, structural. Decisions to be made, and it took time, and it took intelligence, and it took uh, uh, skilled laborers and, 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 uh, and tradespeople to build the sanctuary. It didn't just happen. If you, if you, you know, it's illogical. The other one is, how about a painting? A painting requires uh, intelligence and someone that actually uses different colors of paint to paint a dog or a person or landscape or whatever it it's not an explosion in a paint factory and even if you had a, a, a paint factory where'd that come from all right and you can go on a car that you're driving to get here i uh, needed an engine an engineer a designer somebody had to make it all right this watch took some design you take all the pieces of this watch you put it into a a dryer and leave it, how long do you have to leave it in the dryer till it falls in together and tumbles into being a working watch with the right time? All right? I mean, it's, it's, it's illogical uh, to think that the birds and the bees and the, and the trees and the flowers and the stars and the moon, uh, we had this eclipse this week that they could tell exactly when that was going to happen. It's illogical that it was just evolved. And so, very quickly, you can prove God exists. Then you have to search for which God is it. And we'll leave that one for others for another time.
the screaming eagles, God is speaking to us. One of the biggest arguments why there is a God, because God is still speaking. You know, one person was talking to somebody, how do you know God exists? Well, because I talked to him early this morning, and he talked to me. All right, that's pretty simple. God still, how many people God has uh, spoken to sometime in the last month or, or less? All right, God has spoken to you. Look at that. How many people have been touched or healed by God at some point in your life? All right. How many people have prayed and you've received a financial miracle? All right. God is God's still interested in us. Amen. He is real. And uh, so I just want to uh, encourage you to come out to this conference. He's speaking. We can learn how to hear his voice. And then we can also receive uh messages. We call it the prophetic um, or prophecy. And I don't know about you, but I want to get my tuner in. You know how you tune in old-fashioned radios? You, you get it all staticky and you keep tuning it in until you get it clear? I, I, I want to get my hearing even clearer than what it is. Anybody know what I'm talking? Anybody interested in that? You need to come to this conference. It's uh, um, April 26th through the 29th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Dr. Russ is here Friday night and Sunday night. And Daniel's here Saturday night and on Monday night. And then during the day on Saturday from 10 to about 1.30 plus some time for ministry, probably 2 o'clock, we're going to have a workshop on hearing the voice of God and activation. And you don't want to miss the Saturday session. So that's coming up. Let me quickly go through children's ministry. We just want to bless the children. Toddlers, if you want to work with toddlers, we're still looking for more uh, volunteers. This Friday night, we have our prayer night at 8 o'clock. Baby dedication, little, uh, little Benjamin, Mike and Joanne's uh, new baby on the 28th. Uh, we had a great time yesterday for men. If you missed it, you missed good food. Great testimony from, uh, from Daryl that was playing this morning. It was remarkable. The next one is May the 11th. And um, glory to God. I, the seniors re uh, ministry, anything today? Not today. So it's another time. The, what's that? 28th of April. Okay. Uh, board meeting uh, is coming up on the... Uh, uh, 23rd, and our annual general AGM meeting is May the 1st. Everybody is welcome to come to the end. That's just where we discuss the finances and decisions and board selection and, and all, all those good things. May the 8th, we're having a ministry team training, and everyone turn to somebody and say, you're invited. We want to increase our ministry team uh, here, uh, and this will teach you, so this is going to be the basics, how to pray for people, the do's and the don'ts. On uh, June the 12th, this is with Donna Parishin, on June the 12th, she's coming back to do an advanced one. How do you, how do you, um, how do you uh, uh, pray inner healing? Somebody's gone through some stuff. How to, how to pray deliverance, get people free from demonic spirits. All right, that's coming up on June the 12th. On June the 9th, Jim Edwards, he was here yesterday with the men, but he's, his family's coming and a few others are doing a gospel music conference concert. Kids camp, mark your calendars, July 2nd to 5th. More information on that later. And then our Aurora Street Festival. Uh, we got some exciting, we got a drama team coming. All right, it's, I, I'll give you more information when I have more information, but they're coming uh, and they're internationally known, and so they're going to help us on the streets. It's just a, a, a remarkable thing. On that morning, on June 2nd, they'll do one or two skits here before we go out onto the street, so you all get to see it. All right, and finally, our summer camp uh, in Aurora is August the 9th to the 19th, and I believe those are all our announcements I'm going through them quickly because we have a video from Dr. Russ. Father, we just pray over this offering. May it be used to extend the kingdom of God both here and around the world. 
And whatever you've sown in here has left your hand, but this offering will never leave your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Are we ready to watch the video? Dr. Russ has a very special announcement, uh, very, very exciting. Just go ahead and play it whenever you're ready. Well, good morning to all the Eagle Worldwide churches and family. I'm so excited about the moment. I'm excited about the next step and what God's been doing in our hearts and our lives. You know, we've all been through a very difficult season these last seven or eight years. But the promise of God for the restoration of all things, an awakening to the moment, a revealing of what God's purpose and plan is in this hour and season. This is one of the most amazing moments in the history of Eagle Worldwide Ministries. I'm so happy to be able to share my heart just a minute with you this morning with some wonderful news of what God's doing right now. I want to talk to you today about Eagle Worldwide Camp Ablaze. And I want to talk to you about God's purpose for us in the tremendous Jubilee harvest that lies ahead. The best is yet to come. As many of you know, for over 20 years, we operated a very successful and impactful campground in Coketown, Ontario. And it was a wonderful work, and we did the best we could under those conditions. We had a tremendous vision from God. But the land that we were on and the government structure we were under never allowed us to fully walk and work the vision out. They never said no, but there was always more limitations that were put on us. It was only zoned for seasonal. We tried everything to get an expansion, that it could be a year-round facility. But tens of thousands of people were touched at the Eagle Worldwide Campground in Copetown, Ontario. I'm so thankful to the partners and friends and so many of you who walked that vision out. But you know, for most things, there is a time and there is a season. There's a season to embrace. There's a season to move on. And, you know, we've moved on. And that camp not only blessed us and the kingdom and tens of thousands of people over the years, but even in the sale of it, we were able to move forward and own the hub building downtown that houses the Kingsway and Eagle Worldwide offices and two of our churches that meet in there. A tremendous facility, and we own it free and clear from that transaction and the blessing that the campground was to us. You know, God has a way of making everything work together for good. But as many of you remember who were part of that vision, in the whole structure of the vision, there was a, a house that was going to sit on a hill with all the back being glass. And there was a swimming pool. And there was a basketball court. And there was a sand volleyball court. And there was a big field that we were going to use for other sporting events and picnics and things like that. But as I mentioned, we were stopped at every turn. And then, of course, when COVID hit and the governmental restrictions and the rustic style of camp there made it so that people weren't even meeting in awesome-looking places that had all the facilities. So we knew that it was a time, and God spoke to us, and you know what, many of us that were vested into that program, I cried my way through that because Pastor Maeve and I put our heart and our soul into that vision, into that property. But we knew God had other plans. And through revelation and confirmation, we knew it was time to move on, and it blessed the ministry and carried us through some very difficult seasons where many ministries and churches were not able to continue to move. We were in a place, God positioned us to weather the storm and to move into the new season. Well, I want to tell you right now, 
this last year, year and a half that we've been traveling again, the traveling ministry team, and of course the campground, was the feeder ministries for all the rest of Eagle Worldwide, including the churches. It was a place where you could gather together and have events and, and gather interest and worship God and, and radical tabernacle worship that it was the feeder for every part of our ministry. Now, the new step, the next step forward, and every one of us know that this is a new season, a new time, and a new moment. And I have some tremendous news for you. God has put into our hands Equal Worldwide, Camp Ablaze. It's in Lillian, Alabama, about 20 minutes or so from the dwelling place. And the offices of Eagle Worldwide will be moved into the camp facility. It's a big, beautiful house, 55, 5,600 square feet or more, with 12 bedrooms and six or seven baths. But all the animities that were in the vision are here. God's promises to us are yea and amen. And no matter what man does or what restrictions does or what the enemy does, to try to uproot the vision, God always makes a way forward. His name is faithful and true. He's been faithful throughout all of this, and our churches are rebuilding. Our network, of course, in the midst of COVID, struggled through. Now we're back on the build. We're back on the mend. Since we've been traveling, we've gone to nations, and the traveling ministry team and the missionary teams are servicing again the worldwide vision of Eagle Worldwide. Here at this new camp ablaze, beautifully located, right off of Pedita Bay in Lillian, Alabama. Like I said, maybe 25 minutes or so or less away from the Dwelling Place Church, our home church, here in Pensacola, Florida. Many of you had visited. We had like 60 visitors just during winter camp this year. This camp belongs to you. Every one of the churches, and every part of the ministry. This is our camp. It's Eagle Worldwide Camp Ablaze. Eagle Worldwide USA will do a lot of the day-to-day -day management and handle the operation and activities, but this is a facility open to all of us. Not limited in the number either that we can house here. Probably now we can probably house 60 people or more. It's a beautiful facility. And it has a tremendous spiritual heritage. During the Brownsville Revival, where many of us came out of, our leadership teams, and, and of course myself, that's my alma mater, and during the Brownsville Revival, at the very root of the restoration of my own life, this was the home of Steve and Jerry Hill. And they stayed here during revival and went back and forth to the Brownsville Church in, in Pensacola every night that revival was going on. But they lived out here in a small farmhouse on a large piece of land. And then in 2002, they sold the property to Dr. Sandy Kirk, who was also flat out on fire for the Lord, a powerful apostolic leader who added on to the building a couple of times and added in amenities and turned it into a tremendous camp with a heart for worship and a heart for teens and young adults. Tremendous facility, beautiful pool, sand volleyball, tennis and pickleball, basketball courts, and a chapel that we'll be calling the worship barn at Camp Ablaze. Holds about 140 or so people. It's not a real big facility, but it's beautiful. And everything on the camp, the camp's been shut down for a couple of years, and uh, Dr. Sandy, a wonderful woman of God, very powerful in the spirit, a tremendous author and teacher. Uh, she's at that point in her life where she wanted to move back home to her family in Texas, 
and we honor her and the heritage and the addition and the way she kept the legacy going of Steve Hill and the Brownsville Revival on this campground. Now, the baton's been put in our hands for us to run the race at Eagle Worldwide Camp Ablaze. It's your camp. We're going to have conferences and events here on the beautiful grounds, beautiful facility. It's about seven acres of ground. There's a bunkhouse and there's a uh, there's the chapel that'll be the worship barn and all the facilities. And obviously it needs a lot of work and, and tender, loving care. We've been pursuing this property for more than three years, pressing in and seeing what God would have for us, following after prophetic dreams, prophetic words and confirmations that God was going to restore all things. Twice we were at a turning point but the negotiations fell through and it was sold out from under us. That opened up again right before winter camp. And I, there was re, an immediate response required. But in my heart, I said, I have to hear what the prophets say when they come to winter camp 2024, and then I'll respond. And the prophets didn't know anything about it. We didn't talk to anybody else. We waited to hear what God said. And everyone that came in, you can go back over the videos, every one of them had a prophetic word about the now move, the change in course of direction. And this is a dynamic moment. I believe one of the greatest moments in the history of Eagle Worldwide Ministries. Many of you have partnered with us all these years and been a part of what's done and have been a part of the harvest and been partners in the harvest. I'm going to tell you, we are stepping in to the best. That's yet to come, that he's been promising from that very moment that the best is yet to come. This is our step forward into the great jubilee harvest of the moment. Everything tied into what we've been speaking and preaching and prophesying about all the way back into Rosh Hashanah, that this date of April the 8th and 9th, which is Rosh Kamash, which is the first new man, moon of the new year was the day of our settlement. And people had dreams and visions who knew nothing about it and how it was all going to come together and be put in our hands and faithful and true. Did everything he said he was going to do and it's in our hands. We've made settlement. We're moving forward. Uh, in fact, I've spent the last couple of nights just here in prayer and so is Pastor Maeve. We're so excited about the moment and so many others have partnered with us and, and been involved with this in our leadership team and things like that as we pressed in to what God had for us. We're going to have our grand opening, a rededication service, Memorial Day weekend. On the Friday night, we'll have the rededication service. Saturday during the day, we're going to have a tremendous camp picnic and celebrate the grand opening of Eagle Worldwide Camp Ablaze. And of course, that happens to be Pastor Me's birthday. So, but she celebrates her birthday the whole month of May. It's can you bless me in May? May you, you may bless me for the month, she says. But, you know, we're going to have a great picnic and a church picnic and the other people. Many people are already making plans to come down and to be with us. Canada is going to be blessed more than the United States because more of our network and things like that are there. And here we can be open all year round. And winter camp and all the special events are going to be done right here in the campground. It's going to be a, a tremendous family place for us. It's going to be a place where the church is can send their leadership day teams down and come here and talk about vision and growth and development. They, they can seek the Lord and go back into the deep roots of revival, the Brownsville revival and the tremendous ministry of Steve Hill and Jerry Hill played such a powerful and had such a powerful impact on my life. It was a turning point in my life. He took me from a businessman into pulpit ministry. 
turn me upside down, turn me around, launch me through Calvary Pentecostal campground and into Canada. And as they say, the rest is history. And you've been part of it. And I want you to know that you're the part of our future. I'm going to be up in Canada again this week, and we're doing prophetic conferences and Screaming Eagles training and mentoring programs. And those, I'm still going to be doing the same thing. And we're still pastoring the dwelling place. But God's not taking anything away. He's adding to. He is completing the vision that he put in our hearts all those years ago. I'm going to tell you the best is yet to come. He is faithful and true. He's not a man that he could lie. This is a season of restoration for you and your family, for the churches and ministry, for the church of Jesus Christ around the world. In the midst of the chaos and anarchy of the moment, he's making a path forward. And this is part of it. As he rest restored the very vision that he gave us in 2002. I'm so excited about the moment. I'm excited to see you again soon. Thank you for allowing me to share with you this morning. Pray for us as we press in to the greatest moment in the history of Eagle Worldwide Ministry, the greatest moment for the Church of Jesus Christ around the world. Press in as we press in right now to the end time harvest. Let's keep one another in prayer and relationship. Pastors, thank you so much for allowing us to share. We're looking forward to tremendous moments together at a year-round facility close to the beaches and the golf courses. But this will be a place dedicated unto God that there's deep spiritual roots in history. This ground's been prayed over and cried over by Together in the Harvest and their whole team that pressed in during the Brownsville Revival. Thank you for allowing us to be with you. God bless you. And I'm looking forward to the best that's yet to come. You have a wonderful day now. God bless you. Praise God. So this is exciting. When we were down there, we saw it in, in uh, February. Uh, um, Ellen and Jessica were just down there. They saw it. Tom and Monica, it's an incredible piece of property. Steve Hill, for those that don't know, he was the evangelist that birthed and, and uh, was the key revivalist of the Brownsville Revival down in Pensacola, Florida. Anyway, it's exciting. We hope you can all go down at some point. If I want to make a recommendation, don't go down in July. It's like really hot, but uh, throughout the winter, it's a great place for Canadians to get out of the, get out of the winter. So... We have Victoria here this morning. Let's put our hearts and our hands together and welcome our very own prophetess, pastor, beautiful wife. Let's just give the Lord a praise offering right now. Let's just lift up thanksgiving unto him. Let's just bless his name today. Lord, we just bless you. We worship you. We magnify your name. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. In the earth, all that you're doing, oh God, in the nations, all that you're doing in the church right now, all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, oh God, that you are at work, oh God, even when we don't see it, Lord. You are at work even when we can't feel it, Lord. You are working in our hearts. You're working in our lives. You're working in our midst, oh God. To bring about heaven's plans and purposes for us. And so Holy Spirit, we just welcome you to come and take over the rest of this service here today, Lord. Would you just come and say only what you want to say today to your people. I thank you for every person here in the sound of my voice this morning, oh God. Lord, that the Spirit of God will minister into each and every heart in a, only a, in a special and unique way today. That may we have ears to hear what what your spirit is going to say to us today, Lord. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity, oh God. Oh, Lord God, to deliver your word today. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We honor your presence in this place today. We honor you in our midst today, Lord. We honor you with our thoughts this morning. We honor you with our hearts today. 
And so, Lord, just come and take the reins. Come and do what you want to do. Come today, Lord. Uh, touch our hearts and change our lives. Uh, let us never be the same again, oh, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that the spirit of revelation will be released this morning. I pray today, oh, God, that you would release, oh, God, wisdom, revelation, understanding. I command anything that would hinder our ability to grasp and to comprehend what the spirit of God wants to say this morning morning, I command it to move right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray right now, God, the blood of Jesus over every heart and every mind, that our minds will be so open and receptive to the voice of your spirit today and no other voice. So Lord, I just commit this entire morning to, do, to you right now. I pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people say, Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I kept hearing the word for such a time as this. Such a time as this, and we know where that came from. It's from the book of Esther. Remember the story of the book of Esther? And such a time as this. And I'm thinking now in the natural, what time is it? It is springtime, right? It's springtime, and so as it is in the natural, it is in the spirit. It's springtime. What happens during springtime? There's growth because fruit does not just appear on the tree. It goes through a process, right? And we have to think as our lives, as the Lord was speaking to me about times and seasons. There is a season, but there's also timing too of things to happen uh, when, when things happen. And so in the natural, we know as the temperature changes, things begin, uh, uh, you know, the, the trees begin to, to rise and uh, and. Uh, Chemicals in, in the trees begin to come forward and release the, release the, um, the root system to begin to get activated. Like all of a sudden, you know, the, the chemicals begin to flow. The things in the root system begin to flow. And then next what happened, the buds appear, and then the flowers appear, then the leaves appear. Then all of a sudden, the fruit began to appear. So there is, <clears throat> even though it's springtime, the season is springtime. Even though it's springtime, then we know, but there is a timing, there is a process, there is a, you know, things happen, it's, you know, so it just doesn't all happen at once. There is a quote that says, time is God's way of keeping everything from happening at once. God created time, so he's not subjected by time. He's outside of time. And so God gives us times and seasons. And I just want you to know today that for every person that's in this house, that we are alive for such a time as this. We are, we are alive. We have breath for such a time as this. I often think that we could have been born 2,000 years ago. We could have been born 100 years ago in that season. But God have us here alive at this time. And... God is looking for us to find our purpose in this moment, amen? Because I talk to so many people, well, yes, I'm, I'm existing, but I don't know my purpose. I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And there's so many questions and so very little answers. And I know that, you know, unless we're fully plugged into the Holy Ghost, we will have many questions and very few answers because right now the Spirit of God is trying to channel us as people of God. And even though those of us that are new to the faith, or maybe you've been away from God for a while and you're returning. The Lord wants you to know for such a time as this, you've been brought into the kingdom. Amen? And for such a time as this, that we must know that we all have a purpose in God. And, um, and, that, and, and by the leading of the Holy Ghost, we're going to find that purpose because it's God's will and desire right now for us to embrace fully what He is doing and for embracing the new that God is doing. God is moving in the earth right now, as I said, and things are changing and accelerating. Things are happening rapidly. I mean, like, like movement is happening all around the earth. And, uh, you know, the May, April 8th was such a significant change here, as we know, but the eclipse. And then, lo and behold, less than a week later, there is, you know, there's war again. You know, Iran striking Israel. And these are all symbols and signs of the times that we're living in. And, you know, and so... It's, it's a part of the bigger picture of what God is doing right now. We look around. Um, when we're traveling on a road, we look for signs on the road to know where we're going. And we're traveling on a road to eternity right now, people of God. It's the last road. It's, it's, I mean, this is it. 
And there are signs along the road that we must observe. And if we miss those signs, we're going to miss what God is saying right now. And so we have to be in tune with the Spirit of God. And I just pray this morning that there will be a shift in your heart today, even a shift in your focus, because that's what God wants to do. He wants to shift our focus so that we can be aware of these signs and bring our lives into alignment. Because we can wander about aimlessly, aimlessly without, a, without, a, without a goal, without a purpose. But the Lord is saying today to us as the people of God, and I am also speaking to the mature and those that are just new in the faith or those that are about to step in, because I know this is harvest season, people of God. This is the harvest time, and the, it means that backsliders are going to return. It's going to mean your sons and your daughters are going to come to faith. Amen? It, it's going to mean that your, your mother, your father, and those that you've been praying for a long time, they're going to come to faith because it's the God moment for them to come in. And this is the moment. This is the season. This is the time. And so we have to know that the Father's heart is for souls right now. Excuse me. And God is moving rapidly to bring about his will in the earth. Amen. And so I'm just going to read here from Esther chapter 4. And, um, and in verse it's 13, and actually I'm just going to paraphrase it for the sake of time, because I, I had to condense my message here. It says, if you remain silent at this time, uh, you and your father's house would perish. Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. And who knows, the famous quote, whether you have, been, whether you have come to your position for such a time as this. And as you all know, that Esther did not see that her position had any worth at that time. And I want to tell you today that no matter what it is that God has given unto you, that God wants to use that thing. As a matter of fact, Pastor Don had a dream this morning, and I'm just going to just, just really condense it. But in this dream, we were going for a walk around the river bank, and we were walking, but he noticed that I had something that looked like a rod in my hand. And um, so we were going, and, and we, came a, we came across an obstacle. It was a bridge, and, and under the bridge, there was all these boxes. And it seemed totally impossible, totally impossible to get through this because uh, I said, okay, we, I, I said, we're going to do this. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. And so they were wondering, how is it going to happen? And I, you know, and so he said that I, I had to put this pole. I forgot the name. It was uh, the one that you do the high jump with. A pole bolt. Vault. A pole vault. Pole vault. Okay. A pole vault. All right, and so he said that I had to put it on the box, and then we would all climb on the box with our weight and the pole. So it, in the natural, it was impossible, but we did it. We overcame the obstacles, and I want to say to you today that there may be obstacles in your way, and there, there may have been things that looked impossible and, I, and, and hindrances. Maybe you've, been, you've tried all your life to get to a certain place or to accomplish something. You tried even the Lord. You tried... In, in, in your faith, but you struggled and you wrestled, and maybe you even wrestled with God altogether. And so the Lord just saying, let those things, let those things that know that what you have in your hand, you can overcome the obstacles. And I was reminded of the story of Moses. Why did the Lord said to Moses, Moses, what do you have in your hand? God was calling Moses. He didn't feel him, he didn't, he couldn't see himself as doing what God called him to do. He didn't feel that he was fit, that he was capable. None of us are capable. But the Lord says, what do you have in your hand? He had a rod in his, he had a staff in his hand. He said, throw it down. And you know, it turned into a snake. He said to take your hand, put it in your bosom. You know, he pulled it out. He, he, his hand was leprous. He, he said, the Lord said, put it back in. The hand came out, it was healed. And so the Lord is saying, whatever I've given unto you, whatever is in your hand, the Lord said, use it for this moment. Use it, no matter what it is. And I'm talking about your understanding that we have the power and the authority as believers in our hands. Our hands, but we've also been given gifts and talents and abilities. Things that God is used, looking for us to use right now in this moment and in this season. And don't say, I don't have enough. Don't say, well, I can't stand behind a pulpit and preach. Because maybe not all of us are called to stand behind a pulpit. 
pulpit. But we've got a pulpit in our marketplace, in the grocery store, wherever we go, wherever we work, that, that's our pulpit. But just know that we have been given all that we need for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. We got to know that. We have to know that. And whatever little oh great that we have, offer it up to the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord. Let him have it. Let him take the little that you have because we got to stop saying, I can't. And, you know, like, like the, um, the, the story of the, the train, I can't, I can't, I can't. You remember when the little train says, I can, I can, I can, I know I can. And so we got to begin speaking and telling ourselves we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Not in our own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. Amen? Not in, an all, not in our own power, but in his power. All things are possible to those who believe. Amen. Amen. So we got to know that and use what we have in our hands. And that is so important in this season that we are in right now because Esther didn't know what she had. Esther didn't know that God put her into that position of royalty for such a time as this. And she kept thinking of all the obstacles, all the hindrances. Well, the king has not invited me in for 30 days. And if I, and, and if I show up, you know, anyone that shows up uninvited, they can be killed. And so she goes, she got all the excuses right, but she left God out of the picture. That God ordained that place and position for us. And God has ordained your place and position for you. And we got to know that God wants to use us. And no matter where we're at, no matter where we're standing right now, until she needed a Mordecai. We all need a Mordecai in our lives. That was her uncle that says, go tell her. Tell He, he, he sent the messengers. Go back and tell Esther that she should know that if she doesn't step up right now, that her and her people will perish. And we are coming into that time and days and season the season is upon us right now it's war time this morning all my, my entire dream was a long dream it was all about war and I know there's war in the natural that's happening but there is a greater war that's that's going to rise like never before is the war between like light, light and darkness good and evil right and wrong that's the war and it's the war that rages against our souls that try to keep us in a place of darkness the enemy doesn't want us to step into the light he he wants to keep us in darkness and I know but there's light that's beginning to shine even those that are watching online right now and those in the sound of my voice know that the light of God is coming upon you that whatever is in darkness is being illuminated even the lies and the things that have kept you bound the things from the past the Lord says I'm bringing my light upon it right now and I'm gonna set you free in the name of Jesus let's just give the Lord a clap offering this morning Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The light is coming in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so I'm going to keep on moving here. And um, at the beginning of this year, I shared a word, and I've been speaking this quite often. The Lord says, I am the Alpha. And you got to get this. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This year, he says, my people is going to know me as the Omega, the God who finishes what he started. The completer, the author, and the perfecter of our faith. Philippians 1, 6 says, And I, I'm sure of this, that he who has begun a good work in you, say, he has begun a good work in me. He will bring it to completion at the day of Christ. That means on the day when we stand before the Lord. Amen? He's going to bring it to completion. Amen? Amen? And so he's redeeming, restoring, and reconciling us right now. One with another, and, 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 he's with, and, and one with him, and one with each other. He's healing relationships right now like never before. I mean, he's putting everything right side up. Everything that has been upside down in our lives, in our families, in our nation, in our culture, in our communities. He's bringing it right side up. Amen? Amen. And so as uh, Job, in, in Joel chapter 2, it says, he will restore unto you all the years. We got to believe that right now. The restoration of all the years that the enemy has stolen. All the years that the canker worm have destroyed. He shall restore. Amen. He is restoring. I get, I listen, let's just give an amen to that. Because we got to believe it. We got to believe it in Numbers chapter 13. Why do we have to believe it? Numbers chapter 13, there were 12 men that were sent to spy out the plum promised land. And listen, it, 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 I, 
back in the Bible, that was a physical place. But today, we're calling that place the place of our promise, the, the promises of God according to this word here. That's, a, that's the place that we are believing for, 12%. And only two came back with a good report. Why is that? Perspective. What is your perspective of the future? What is your perspective of tomorrow? We got to have the God perspective. The 10, all they saw were the giants in the land. All they saw were the obstacles in their eyes. All they saw was how great the giants were and how little. They looked like grasshoppers compared to the giants. Only two men, two men came back with a good report. They saw the fruit that was in the land, how big the fruit were. They saw the goodness that was in the land. They saw the, 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 the potential, the possibility that were in the land what happened to the 10 they all perished they never made it into their promised land and we got to be people of God this day this hour this moment we got to be like the two spies we got to we got to we got to look to the future and we got to see what's there for us if we see doom and gloom and hopelessness and despair guess what that's, what we're, that's how we're going to end up in despair, in hopelessness, in doom and in gloom. We don't want to come in agreement with what the news is saying. Yes, it's all bad. We know what's all going to happen. But we, if we leave God out of the picture, yes, it's going to be gloom and doom. But with God, but with God. Amen. He's our eternal hope, the hope of glory that lives inside of you and inside of me. People of God, this is why we need him now more than ever before. This is time we got to return to God. No more room for backsliders. No more room for us to stay out of the game. It's time to get into the game. Amen. It's time to run this race. Listen, and you may not know where to start, but you could start in the first place. Lord, I'm surrender. I surrender. I'm surrender. I surrender my life. I surrender. I'm going to stop uh, kicking against the goads, going the different way. It's time for us to return with everything, with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We return to him right now. We return to his heart. We return to the will of God. And because only then are we going to be able to know that we can do all things. If we don't have the Lord in our lives in the right place, if everything else is taking the position of God in our lives, if we got idols, those things are called idols. Whatever else takes the place of God in our life, it's considered an idol. And we've got many idols. It could be, our, you know, our job, our finances, our children, or whatever. Whatever takes the place of God, no matter what it is, it's an idol. And we must confess and repent of these things so that God can take preeminence. He can be first place in our lives. Amen. This is the place and the position that he wants to hold in us right now. Because of the days where we're headed into, we want to look at the future and smile. We want to know that our future is glorious. We want to know that there's such a place for believers called a prophetic Goshen. And you know, that was a place in the Bible. A Goshen was a place where when all the the plagues came against Israel that they had a safe place where they were protected from all the things that happened so they did not die but during that time they prospered it was a prosperous place it was a, a protection it was a safety place for them God has a place for his people and it's called that prophetic Goshen too so in the days that are to come we can know that we can know that that God has our backs amen and we are his children. And one day we're going to meet with him. This life, this, this life is not our home. Earth is not our home. Amen. This world is not our home. Heaven is our home. And it's our eternal destination. Amen. And we got to know that we got to know that when, when that day comes where we're going. We don't know when that day is going to come. But we know that whenever it comes, we're going to have to choose up or down. We got to choose heaven or hell. Smoking or non-smoking. But we're going somewhere. Amen. Amen. So we don't want to go smoking there because you're going to be smoking on fire for the rest of our lives. But we got to choose where we're going to go. And if at any time that we got to choose, it's now. We got to get our hearts right. We got to, I mean, we got to let things go. I'm going to share quickly some dreams with you. I'm not going to share all the details as you well know, but I'm going to, I'm going to get into that. I, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you. Actually, I want you to turn to this. I love this here, Psalm 139. Oh, yes, I got talking about beginning and the end, and I got off a little, and I got off on a little trail there. <laughs> yes, that he's the Alpha and the Omega. And I, I want you to see this because this was really help you here. Psalm 139. And, I'm, and for, um, uh, for those that are working on the, um, the overhead and the Passion Translation, I'm going to read from chapter five, uh, uh, sorry, verse 5, chapter 139. And it says here, you have gone into my future. So now I'm looking to you. I'm talking about God being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So I just want to back up here before I started reading. Uh, the beginning means that he was at your beginning, and the end means he's going to be at your end when you arrive there. That's what that means. So he knows all about us. But I just wanted to give it to you in the scripture here this morning. He says, you've gone into my future to prepare the way, and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. So he's in the future, and he is in the past. Amen? He was in your past. And he's, he said, it says here, you have laid your hand on me. And it says here, okay, now I'm going to read in uh, verse 16. You, saw, you who saw, sorry, you got it there? You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. So before you were born, he knows exactly the length of your days. How many days you're going to be here on this earth for. He's the beginning. At your beginning, he's at your end. So that means that he's in your process. He's in the way, he knows the way that you take. He's already where you're headed. He's, he knows exactly where you've been in your past. We all have had one. He knows the wounds. He knows the scars. He knows the hurts that we've all been through in our past because he saw it all. But he also knows what you're going to do to go to get to the end. He knows the path we take. We are stewards, not owners of our lives. The word says that we are priests and kings. And as priests, we apply the blood of Jesus Christ. As kings, we bring kingdom dominion into, into, this, into all that we steward, including our time. Our time, we get to steward our time. And so the Lord is looking to us, what are we doing with our time that we have been given just for this moment in life? This is not eternity. We determine where we go for eternity, but there's only two destinations, as I said. We got to choose the right one. We got to choose heaven. And this morning, I want to share this revelation with you about God being the God of our past. He's the redeemer of our past and our present and also our future. The Lord was speaking to me about the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus Christ to redeem every moment in our lives and set us free. Do you know that you can, just like you invite him to come now, Lord, I invite you to come into my life now. You can invite him to come into your past. Do you know you could do that? Because he could go to those places in your past. You want to have a very easy inner healing just be proactive. Just be beginning to say those situations in your past that kept you stuck, that kept you bound, that held you up, that you're still living in the past. Even though you're living in the present, you're still, your life is lived out in the past. God wants to heal that so that we can move forward into the new. Amen? And, and you know, and so I've been practicing this, asking the Lord to come back and to manifest himself in, my, in situations where I felt I was hurt, where I felt there was a wound or a scar that was left in me that I'm still living today. I've been trying to do that and asking the Lord to come and bring healing to all those things from the past. And the Lord has been faithful to do that because he's Alpha. He's been there. Amen? And only he can heal us. Amen? Hallelujah. And, um, and so as we engage with the Holy Spirit, things are going to change for us. 
And um, I just wanted to say something here before I'm going to just carry on, but I, I need to share this. During prayer this, year, this, this past week at, at uh, a prayer, and um, the word month came up. And we were, we were focusing on the month, which the month we are in is April right now. And I recall several words that were given at the beginning of the year about what April is going to be a month where there's going to be a shift and an acceleration in the harvest. And so I began, after I got home, I began researching all about, you know, the Hebrew meaning of April and all that happened in April and everything that's connected with the month of April. And actually, I was really blown away uh, about all that this month of April signifies. And there was a prophetic word, like since back in the early of the year, that watch April this year, what God is going to do, that things are going to change in April, and so April is the month of Nisan, the month, it's also called the month of miracles and the month of redemption. Go figure that. The month of miracles and redemption. It's physical and spiritual re resurrection in our lives. This month was also called Kodesh HaYeshua, the month of salvation. And it was prophesied earlier that this month, the harvest is going to be accelerated. That we're going to see a great harvest comes in. I'm sharing this so that you can grab a hold of this and begin to believe again for that lost loved one. Amen? I'm sharing this to boost your faith so that, because you could see how this ties in with the prophetic word that came earlier in the year. It is a celebration of the miracles the children of Israel experienced during this month surrounding their exodus from Egypt. It is when the Jewish people became free and they started owning their own time. Isn't that amazing? That their time, they, they were no longer slaves. They were free people. Nisan is the month to start letting go of anything that holds you back. Powerful. Whether a limiting belief, a wrong mindset, a thought pattern, an unhealthy relationship. You know, when I, you know, when I took this through myself, when I went through this, Lord, is there any limiting beliefs? Yes, I found some. Is there any wrong mindset? Yes, there were some there. Were there wrong thought patterns? Yes, they were. Yes. And, um, and so I began to take the word and apply it. And I realized that over the years, it's so easy for us, we can erect strongholds in our minds to protect wrong feelings, thoughts, and mindsets, and belief systems that we have. What is a stronghold? Something that we hold on to for so long that it shifts from being a toehold, a foothold, a stronghold becomes a fortress. It becomes solidified. It becomes cemented inside of us. And the Lord was just showing me how we've got things cemented inside of our minds. That is a lie that we believed about ourselves because of what happened to us. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they had strongholds, beliefs, mindsets from Egypt that the Lord had to work through them during their time in the wilderness. And we know so many of them of that generation that came out of Egypt. They perished in the wilderness because they still kept reverting back to what they had about the food that they, get, they had to eat in, in Egypt, that place of bondage. Forgetting that they were slaves, they were not free people. They loved the bondage. And so they developed strongholds, mindsets that kept them bound to past beliefs and, and, and behaviors and things that happened, hurts. They never made it into the promised land. Their children did, however, the generation, their, all their children, they, they made it into the promised land. But the parents never did, the ones that came out of Egypt. And I really feel right now that there are strongholds in our minds. There are things that we protected that has to be destroyed. You have to tear them down. And I just want you to say, thanks be unto God. 
who causes us to triumph in all things. So we've got the power to take down these strongholds. Amen. Amen. And so I'm, I'm telling you, and so just a quick dream. That, you know, I'm just going to capsulize these dreams here. But just recently, I was just in, in my dream instructing someone to shut the back doors. Because I said there, we cannot allow the traffic in the back door, the coming in and the going out, the coming in and the going out. That they had no control over what comes in and what goes out. Shutting the back door. So the back door in our dream represents the past. It represents the things from the past. We got to shut the back door. We got to shut the door to the things of the past. We got to allow the enemy to destroy these, wrong, uh, these strongholds that we've erected in our minds. Whatever it is from the past that is affecting our present, our present and also our future, we have to shut the doors on that once and for all and shut the devil out of our minds. Amen? And then in that same dream too, I was giving a lease to someone. I was giving a lease to someone to use, um, to use my, my, my property. And, and so giving a lease to someone means that you're giving them legal rights. You're giving them permission to have possession of you, of your space. Or to give them uh, permission to use something that's when you're giving the lease. They, they didn't just occupy it. They were given a lease. And so the Lord was just saying, we give a lease to the enemy. When we allow our thoughts and our minds and, uh, to carry us back into the past. And, and sometimes we go back there and we dwell there for a while. Then we need ministry to get out of that place. But listen, we are coming into days right now. We got to understand that there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to realize that the power of uh, that the blood has redeemed us. He has redeemed us with his blood. And we can just ask him because to take his redemptive power of the blood back into those places. Lord, go back to that place, to, to that moment. And heal that place. Redeem that place that the devil has occupied in my life. In my, in, in my time frame. Because God is the God of your memory, the present, of, of, your future, of, your, of your past and your future. He knows your beginning and he knows your end. So if there was stuff in the beginning that God messed up, ask the Lord to redeem it for you. And be specific, Lord, when this moment happened, when this situation happened. Lord, I invite you to come and bring your redemptive power. Bring your glory into that place. Redeem it, Lord. Redeem it and heal my heart and heal the wounds and heal the scars that's in me that I've, I've had, we, that I've left in, that was left inside of me from that place. But the Lord is saying it's time. And I know we've been doing this as the body of Christ. We've been uh, working on, you know, and, and the Lord perfecting us and healing us and restoring us. But I believe that the grace of God, why is this coming up again? Because I thought, oh Lord, we've been closed. I thought we closed all the back doors and we closed, you know, things to our past. We've been dealing with that. And because he's been bringing us through a process to get things out of us so that we can be effective for him. Amen. And live in the moment and live in what God has ordained for us at this moment and time and not be living in our past when he wants us to be looking at the future and knowing that because I've been redeemed from my past wrongs and I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ I have a glorious future you have a glorious future amen and that's his purpose for us seeing like the two spies Joshua and Caleb that they saw the good and they didn't see the evil they saw that God had a purpose remember Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give plans to give you a future and a hope he was prophesying that Jeremiah over the children of Israel they were in a place of captivity but he was trying to speak hope because God is saying, this is what I have for you. I have a future for you. Amen. And so he wants to give us new glasses today. He wants to take off the old and put on the new upon us today. That we begin to see ourselves the way he sees us. And we begin to see life not through the old lenses, but through the new lenses of faith. Knowing and taking this word, this word, this spoken word. He wants us to take the spoken word 
as the truth. Amen. He wants to take this as his promises, a book of promises, that everything that was said in here, it wasn't, it wasn't for them. It's for us. It's for now. Amen. And every word that he's spoken, he's faithful and he will bring it to pass. I've been calling for every word that's been spoken over your life throughout your lifetime to manifest. Amen. I've been calling every word that is spoken over this house for the past 23 years to manifest in the now because that's who he is. He's faithful to his word and he will perform the word that came out of his mouth that not nothing that he has spoken you may have been you you have been you may have been walking with the lord in your in, earlier in life but the lev, the devil cut in on your race and you pulled back you pulled away but the lord said it's time to return to return back to him to return to his heart with everything that you got inside of you return to him return to him and give your life back to him again only because uh, this is a, such a prophetic message today. And I, I didn't share all the details of all the dreams. But I'm speaking from a position of uh, a place of, of revelation. Revealed knowledge. The Lord wants us to know that what he's saying right now. What Jesus and Father are praying right now. Jesus is our chief intercessor. He's interceding on behalf of us to the Father right now. And he wants us to know. That there is grace available to us to shut the doors in our lives. Shut the back doors. Forgive if what needs to be forgiven. Let go what needs to be let go of. But, you know, and whatever it is, whoever it may be, we've all been, we, we've all been wronged. We've all been hurt deeply by somebody in our lives. Especially those closest to us that hurt us. That's the hardest to deal with. But we cannot forget the redemptive power of the blood. We cannot we forget that Jesus paid it all on the cross for us. We cannot forget that he gave all. He gave us everything that he had to redeem us. He paid a great price. And that great price determines your value. Your situation. I want you to get this. The price that Jesus paid on the cross for you determined your value. Not who the world made you, not what was done to you, not what somebody said about you. And many of us here have people spoken words over us that was intended to cripple us. But thank God that their words have no power. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that those words have been broken. And as a matter of fact, I just want to break the power of words that have been spoken over your life. Even from family members, those closest to you, because those are the words that have power. Those are the authority over you. I just want to break the power of every word curse, every negative word, every ill-spoken word, every ill wish, every word that does not align with the Spirit of God and the Word of God. I break its power. And its effects off your life right now in Jesus' name. Leaders spoken words over the people of God that were negative words. They did not realize what they were doing. So we forgive. You forgive them too. But we just declare today that those words carry no weight over your life. They, carry, they become powerless and ineffective over your life. That they will no longer remain over your life in Jesus' name. And I just want to speak a cleansing over you this morning. A cleansing with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just want to thank you today. Hallelujah. I'm just going to share just a little bit more here. And then we're going to pray. What did I finish on the month of Nisan? Yes. Just, just wanted to say I... I, I I was talking about the limiting beliefs and the strongholds, yes. And so one of the other things, too, I have to finish this up. It was the month which the Passover occurred. Jesus became our Passover lamb. In the month of Jesus, it, it's the month of Jesus' death and resurrection, which for us represented a, pass, represented a passing from eternal death into eternal life. This month also represents... New life, new beginning. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that incredibly awesome? Praise the Lord. So the Lord's just saying this month, let us embrace all that he has for us in this month. Amen. 
there were also too a, uh, another dream about locked up blessings. And the Lord was just saying they're blessings that have been locked up because the enemy had control over that. And the Lord wants to release our blessings. Amen. There are things that have been locked up that got to be released in Jesus' name. And the scripture that the Lord gave me for, gave me for that was Isaiah 61. He said, um, and I'm going to just quickly read this here, Isaiah 61, 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to say those words right now. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. The day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. And to grant all those who mourn in Zion. The beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That, name, that they may be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And now this is what the Lord said here. And I'm going to read this. Um, he says in verse uh, 6 here, it says, And you shall be named the priest of the Lord. You shall, and they shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the, the riches of the Gentiles in their glory. You shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have a double portion. Somebody say amen. amen. And instead of confusion, you shall rejoice in their portion. Did I get that right? Yes. You shall rejoice. They shall rejoice in their portion. Hallelujah. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. I want to say to you this morning that it's a time for the double portion of the Lord. The world and the news does not determine God's blessings upon your life. It does not determine the favor of God upon your life. Amen? And so we got to begin to see. We got to begin to see with eyes of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we can partner with him right now for his presence, his redeeming blood. I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads as we're going to wrap up right now. As we're going to just go into a time of prayer here. Revelations 1.8 says, Jesus is called the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. He was, he is, and he is to come. And this morning, we're going to invite the Lord to just come in. And, and um, you know what? Before I do this, I've shared a lot of things here this morning that the Lord laid on my heart. But if you're here in this house, you're watching online. And you've been struggling with your faith, or maybe you've been on the sideline, have been watching the race go by. And you're just, I don't know if I should jump in. I don't know if I should step in. You have to remember, we have to secure our eternal home. If we should die today, do we know we're going to heaven? If our number is called, do we know where we're headed? We must secure that. And I'm asking you today, if you don't know that for sure, that you consider that this morning. That you consider inviting him into your heart. That you consider asking him to take his place in your life. Because only then can you invite him to go back into your past and heal your past. 
Because when you invite him into your life, redemption begins. Because it, it, it begins with the blood. The blood to redeem you from darkness into light. From the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God. Redemption begins. The redemptive power of the blood begins. To redeem everything in your life. To restore what the devil has stolen. To reconcile what has been broken. And the first place he wants to reconcile is our hearts. Maybe your heart has been broken. God wants to heal that, those places right now. So I'm going to say this prayer before I begin the ministry because I want to make sure that when we pray and ask the Lord, every one of us here, that you would experience his redemptive power for you. That you will begin to see a change in your life. Because you're inviting him today to come in and to change you and transform you. So I'm going to say this prayer and I'm going to ask everyone in this place to say it. And to repeat it after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I acknowledge that you died on the cross for me. You died to forgive me of my sins. You, you died so that I can have eternal life. I ask you this morning to forgive me of every sin I've ever committed. Everything I have done to hurt you, to hurt others, and to hurt myself. Forgive me, Lord. Lord, today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Lord, I ask you today that you come and fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. I commit my life to you today to serve you with all of my heart and everything that you've given to me today. I give it back to you. Holy Spirit, will you lead me and guide me, teach me and show me the way? I need you, Lord. Let me experience your love in every place in my life. Teach me how to love the way you love. Would you come, Lord? I thank you, Lord for calling me your child today. Thank you, Lord, for calling me your own. Thank you for your redemptive power, the blood of Jesus Christ that is cleansing me and washing me and making me brand new. In Jesus' name. So now as your eyes still close, I'm going to ask the Spirit of the Lord but I want you to think of something in your life where you need to shut the door on once and for all. Some situation that you went through, but it's still there in your mind. It's there, still there in your heart. That you invite the Lord to come and to bring his redemptive power in that place. Ask him to come and manifest his glory. Whatever it may be in your life. You know and the Lord knows. No one else knows. But only you can tell him that thing today. You may feel that you've messed up. And I know some of you may think that God could never forgive me of that. You're in the sound of my voice. But the Lord says, yes, you are forgiven, my child. Yes. I love you. From the time you were born, I saw you in your mother's womb. I knew you. I'm intimately acquainted with all of your ways. Even before there is a word in your mouth, in your tongue, I know it. Even before there is a thought in your mind, I know what you were going to think. 
I know all about you because I am your Alpha and Omega. I'm your beginning. I'm your end. I'm with you right now in your process. And what you're going through, you're not alone. And I'm here today, says the Lord, to heal your past by my grace. Oh, yes, Lord. Hmm. I see in someone's life right now that you've been in a place where you felt that you couldn't get up and you couldn't get out of that place. I see, I saw you felt like if a jackhammer came over you and you were pinned down in that place. But the Lord is coming in right now and he's lifting you up and he's lifting you out by his grace and by the power of his blood to redeem you today. He's redeeming that right now. I invite you, Lord, I just want, you just want to say to him, I invite you, Lord, to come and manifest your glory in that place. Manifest your love in that place today. Lift that one up and out of that place that your healing can come into their hearts, into their lives, and that the door can be shut once and for all in that situation. And if there is even something else, Somebody hurt you so badly. Lord, would you just come in that place, that relationship? Been with the leader, a spiritual leader, a, a, a boss, or somebody in your life, or somebody that had control in your life. They hurt you badly. Oh, Father. It's not by might or by power, but it's by the Spirit of God that is present here today. And I really feel that there's a sovereign work of the Holy Spirit. You, have made, you may have been through healing and healing and healing and ministry and ministry and, and more ministry. But you still struggled. But I feel today that God, I just saw the Lord giving you a key in your hand this morning. And it's not going to be once and done. You're going to begin to invite him into that place. Because you're going to feel good. And the enemy's going to maybe try to take you back there again. But you're going to say, Lord, I invite your redemptive power. I, re I invite the blood of Jesus Christ to redeem that place once and for all. That I will not be limited. And so that's what the Lord was showing me as well. That how how much limitation these things create inside of us because we operate from a place of fear of getting hurt again. We operate from a place of limitation because when we're in fear, we're not in the fullness of faith, meaning we're not in the fullness of believing and trusting and knowing that our Heavenly Father loves us. He's with us. And he wants to redeem that once and for all. Hallelujah. We're surrendering everything. Every place where we're given permission to the enemy. Any lease in our lives. And those places are like leases. Like in the dream. Those places. It's like a lease that was given. And we're taking back the lease today and saying no more. This is enough. And now I also want for us to repent of this. I talk about the strongholds. We just want to, because now I could, this is a different prayer. I wanted to do the prayer of salvation before. But I just want us to ask forgiveness for those mindsets, those thought patterns, those belief systems that we have built a stronghold to protect these wrong feelings in our minds, in our lives. So I just want you to ask the Lord right now. You ask him in your own words right now. Lord, would you just come and destroy every stronghold that I have erected in my mind to protect wrong feelings that I have against anyone. I ask you, oh Lord Jesus, Destroy every stronghold that I have erected to protect wrong emotions, 
false belief systems, wrong mindsets, even attitudes, behaviors. Whatever I have used to cement those things in my life that is not of you. Today, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I ask you, Lord, to demolish and to destroy these strongholds and shake them down to the ground right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will no longer exist inside of my life, Lord, that my life will not be confirmed to those faulty mindsets. I will no longer live my life based on those belief systems and those attitudes and those thought patterns. But I choose today to live my life the way that you purposed and, and intended for my life to be. He's redeeming the past and he says today, he said today, I'm taking you back to your original design, the way that I originally intended for you to become. So Lord, I just want to thank you for that and I declare that over these people today, your people your sons and daughters, Lord, that you take us back, Lord God, to your original plans and purposes, your original design. Lord, we just want to thank you for restoration. We thank you, Lord God, for healing into those places today. Lord, I thank you for the keys that you've given us to use, to walk out to oh God, our redemption, our, our, our fullness. This is part of the processes of, of of him bringing us into the fullness the fullness of his love the fullness of his spirit the fullness of his blessings and the fullness of every intention of the father's heart towards you and towards me that no longer are you going to look back to yesterday don't look back to yesterday Bible says in Romans 8 1 now there is therefore there is now no condemnation I want you to say no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus and so because you're in Christ there is no condemnation there is no guilt of yesterday the only one that's going to try to keep you in guilt of yesterday and in condemnation is the devil we don't we don't listen to the devil he's not the one that we partner with we're going to partner with the Lord amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's such a sweet moment here right now. We just want to thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have you, did you receive this morning? Were you blessed today? I hope that... And I pray that you take these keys, not just for this morning alone, because I know it came in prayer. And the understanding of God being your beginning and your end, Alpha and Omega, let it take a new meaning to you. That you know that God's going to finish the good work that he started inside of you when he created you. He laid out his purpose and his plan for your life. Just surrender everything that you have to... Uh, everything is given to you surrender it to him let him use it for for his glory amen and let us watch the words that we speak our words can keep us in the past our words can be the thing that would bind us to the past let's change our words and we change our world remember that that that, that saying change our world with our words let us begin to be the two spies the two spies, the Joshua and the Caleb's. So I'm going to say, Joshua and Caleb's, begin to see your future. Amen. Begin to spy out your future with the, with the new glasses that the Lord's given to you. So that you could see that your future is all glorious. Amen. Your future is all bright. Amen. And that because of the Lord, because of Him, we, have, we are victorious. Amen. And last, before Pastor John takes over here, um, I, I just want you to know, victory has a sound when you're on the winner t winning team you know when the winning team is winning because there's a sound that comes from them I want to say to you don't lose your sound don't be quiet just begin to praise the Lord the other day I started prayer I just feel to just just say th just with Thanksgiving I begin to thank the Lord for everything under the Sun I could think of 
You know what happened in 10 minutes? The atmosphere shifted. Everything changed. And I begin to feel like I'm floating because, let, 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 let me tell you, when we can walk with an attitude of gratitude, there's power. Amen. There's power in our praise. So let the devil know that you are victorious. Amen. Let the devil know that you are more than a conqueror. Amen. Let him know that uh, that victory has a sound and it's in your voice. Amen. You are an overcomer. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just give the Lord a clap offering right now and let's just thank him. And uh, We're going to pray for some people. I'm going to have the ministry team come up, but we're going to pray for some people here. I know some people need prayer, but we're going to pray this morning and we're going to believe for your miracle because April is the month of miracles. So let's just believe for miracles. Amen? Amen. Powerful, powerful word. We'd be amiss if we didn't pray for Israel right now. All right? We prayed at the beginning, but let's pray again. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the world today. Everything that Victoria talked about, Lord, it's time to look up and it's time to, to see that the return of Christ is very soon and yet the Bible says that there's going to be an end time battle and we're seeing it unfold right now and uh, so Father I just pray that you would open the eyes of everyone Jews Arabs atheists Canadians everyone Lord to look up and see Yeshua HaMashiach if a Jew doesn't know Jesus, he's not redeemed. If an Arab doesn't know Jesus, he's not redeemed. And anybody else that doesn't know Jesus, they're not redeemed. They're going to the place, they're going to the smoking section. We want everybody to go to heaven. So, Father, we just pray right now you give incredible wisdom to Benjamin Netanyahu, the IDF. We, we ask, oh God, for wisdom for our prime minister, for the G7, for America. Father, we just pray for wisdom right now. It's not the time. It is not your time. Not yet. It's close, but it's not yet. So, Father, just bless. You said you'd bless those that bless Israel and you'd curse those that curse Israel. Genesis 12, 3. So we bless and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. 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 Well, we have a special birthday in the house. Dr. Josh, we've got a cake. We're going to sing happy birthday to him out in the fellowship hall. And if it's anybody else birthday in the last week or this week, anybody else who else who squealed points to somebody. All right. I can't see back there. The lights are too bright. Omid's birthday. Oh, 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 oh no. He, he was just using the camera. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow night, Pastor Sander, Sandra B., how about that, all right? She will be here. You don't want to miss it. God bless you online. We're signing off online now. And we are going to open the altars. Our ministry team is going to be here. You feel free to come forward and get prayer. Amen. God bless you. Welcome back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to invite you all to put in your prayer requests. I know we have one. Mm -hmm. Alex, we're going to pray for you and your family in just a moment. But for those of you who are, are still with us, or maybe if you're tuning in in the replay, we want to encourage you to put your prayer requests in. If this is like within the week of the airing, we will go back and uh, look at the previous posts that were put in after we've gone live. So we will pray for you live again when we're on screen. But if this is much later than the week after the live viewing, please feel free to put in your prayer requests at prayer at tgpoa.com. That's prayer at tgpoa.com. And we have a team of intercessors who pray um, ongoing, 24-7 really, uh, but we meet several times a week as well um, to pray for all of the prayer requests that, that come in. So it is anonymous. You can just use initials if you don't want to um, divulge details. Everything is handled with extreme discretion, mm -hmm. but we want to encourage you to 
bring in those prayer requests so we can stand with you and agree in the power of the Lord Jesus for that victory, for that breakthrough, for that encouragement, whatever it is you need. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests from the team right now? I'm hearing no, but we do have Alex's prayer request. Helena, would you like to lift up Natalia and the family? Yeah, it would be my pleasure, my honor. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jehovah Rapha, that you're the great Amen. physician. Lord, that it's your will that we are healed and made whole, and you made a way for that through the cross, Lord. Your word says by his stripes we are healed. And so whenever we're sick, uh, it's never from you, Father. And so we have the authority to come against it. And in Jesus' name, we speak healing over Natalia, over the whole family. Yes, Lord over Alex, over all the kids. And Lord, we thank you that your healing virtue is coming to their house today. Amen. In Jesus' name, Lord, Father, I just lift up Natalia. God, mm. I speak strength, healing, wholeness, restoration, thank you, rest into her body. Oh God, Father, I come against any sickness, infirmity, disease, illness, Father, whatever is plaguing, harassing, or tormenting her body and her sense of wellness, any system, Lord, that's being attacked today, Father, we command it to cease and desist, Lord. Father, we rebuke Jesus it, Lord, name. and we thank you and declare healing over her today, God. I thank you for strength coming back into her body in Jesus' name, Father, and we speak that by faith, knowing that God is the same and never changes and that he is the healer and that healing is our bread. Amen. It's our inheritance. It's our gift. And we have it in Jesus' name. So, Natalia, receive your healing in today, Father, and we bless you and your family. And we thank you, Lord, that you don't only start it, but you finish it in Jesus' name. So complete wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, sister. And I just want to remind everybody, uh, tomorrow we have Pastor Sandra Benalia. Um, and I do want to do a little quick recap because I really was feeling uh, an extra measure of grace oh. on the moment. Uh, just, just to recap uh, some important things that Pastor Victoria had said, and maybe you're tuning in a little bit late, but don't forget, join us tomorrow with Pastor uh, Sandra Benalia. But um, when I was in Pensacola, uh, so I just got back from, from Pensacola, and the Lord gave me a very powerful vision there. And Pastor Victoria ministered almost exactly what the details of the vision was. And so this is very much on the heart of God. And I want to also just agree with Pastor Victoria and in you in prayer. Um, but the Lord had showed me a double helix uh, DNA strand. And if you know anything about the DNA strand, there's the alpha strand and the, the, the alpha uh, helix and the beta helix. But the Lord said it's not the beta helix, it's the omega helix. And the alpha is the beginning. And of course, we heard today the omega is the end. And the DNA is what God has used to code our identity in us. Yes. And I love how beautifully articulated that that Pastor Victoria spoke that out, that he was the creator, the designer, the original divine design, but he's already at the end of who we are and our identity. And he's causing that DNA to be reconstructed in us according to our original divine design. And right at the end, she talked about the sound of when, when we're winning, there's a different sound. And the Lord had said in that vision that he's uh, changing the frequency of our heart as he reconfigures our DNA right. and imparts to us his divine DNA, his divine design, that is, or his original design for us, but that he's recalibrating the sound of our heart and causing the frequency of our heart to come higher. And in that, there is so much that would help us to rise above and to dislodge every old thing, weighty thing, any kind of negative word, any bad thing that has come against us, but even that which we have spoke out and, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But if he's changing the sound of our heart, just like Pastor Victoria said so beautifully, when, you're, when your team is winning, there's a sound. And that sound is what God is promising to do and to create and cause to come forth out of us mm -hmm. as we reign and as that divine design becomes 
into its fullness in our lives. So I speak that blessing mm. over you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And you know what? It's amazing how Holy Spirit just blends it all together. He connects everything because, you know, there was an interactive time of prayer in the, in the middle of that message where we got to speak that sound and come into agreement with it. And even Pastor John was talking about the great designer. It's yeah. amazing how he ties it all together. And one thing that, you know, it's, it's, we love hosting and we love connecting with you. But uh, one of the drawbacks is we have to deke out of the uh, service a little early to get ready for here. Mm -hmm. And so I can't wait to go back and listen to the end, especially that really powerful prayer that Pastor Victoria prayed. And so if you missed any of the service, we encourage you to go back and listen to the entire message. It's incredible how Holy Spirit designed it start to finish and tied it all together. And I love how you tied it into your vision. God is amazing. Yeah, he truly is. And so with that, we want to sign off and wish you a divinely designed week yes. in the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power Ooh. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.